okay good evening everyone so today's video is regarding one of the abg sent to me by one of the members abhinav on our telegram group and in in first view the abg looks simple but i want to make a point while solving this abg so let's see uh, what is that point in uh, today's abg let's see so as you can see this is an abg before solving any abg we need to find what is the clinical history because once you know the clinical history you will rule out the differentials and you will anticipate certain changes in the abg the history was not clear to us in this but we start uh, we solve this abg from the scratch now after the history the first thing you need to uh, see in abg is the oxygenation so normal po2 is 8200 here 98.6 so oxygenation is pretty fine uh, i'll write somewhere here else let me see okay oxygenation is fine okay now second thing you need to see is the pco2 ventilation what is the ventilation so here normal uh, uh, pco2 is somewhere between 35 to 45 and the pco2 is getting washed out in this patient so it is 26.7 so this patient is hyperventilating so i'll write down here hyperventilation present right now the important point for which i have taken this abg as an example now for new beginners who are starting to solve this abg you can see the ph 7.42 so normal ph is between 7.35 to 7.45 so for them it looks okay the ph is normal so there is nothing it but you see this is this though this ph is normal the pco2 is not normal and the bicarb here are also not normal so there is some force which is creating a disorder and the other force is compensating that disorder so today i want to tell you that compensation never overshoots the primary disorder suppose there is a primary metabolic acidosis so respiratory alkalosis will not overshoot so that your ph become alkalotic same way if you have a patient have respiratory alkalosis patient is hyperventilating so on compensation of that there can be metabolic acidosis which will not overshoot the primary disorder disorder same way if you have a metabolic alkalosis your bicarb are rising so you to compensate the ph your pco2 is also rise but pco2 will not rise so that your ph becomes acidotic understood so compensating mechanism never overshoots the primary disorder so let uh, solve now so for advanced uh, uh, abg solvers you should take 7.4 as the cut off the normal is 7.35 to 7.45 so anything below 7.35 is acidemia anything above 7.45 is alkalemia but if you have a compensatory uh, uh, mechanism present we should always take 7.4 as the disorder means as the neutral point and below 7.4 is acidemia above 7.4 is alkalemia that's the way i solve the abgs so here ph is 7.42 so primary disorder is alkalotic in this so for alkalosis either your pco2 should go down or your bicarb should go up so let's see what what is there here ph a pco2 I, i'll write down here as alkalosis is there alkalosis present okay so we have identified alkalosis is there now either pco2 go, go should go down for alkalosis or bicarb should go up so pco2 is going down bicarb bicarb are not going down so bicarb low bicarb will call acidemia or acidosis and low pco2 will cause alkalosis so primary disorder is respiratory primary primary it's respiratory respiratory alkalosis okay sorry uh, i am writing so that everybody gets clear i am doing it for the first time writing respiratory alkalosis now if it is respiratory alkalosis we need to check the compensation whether it is acute or chronic now here is the crux if it is a respiratory alkalosis and it is a acute one then the for every 10 change in pco2 your bicarb will change by 2 so if your pco2 drops from 40 to 
10 change and if it is acute one within 24 hours then your bicarb will drop to compensate for it from 2 value so it will drop from 24 to 2 22 support is it is a chronic respiratory alkalosis the event which is causing respiratory alkalosis is more than 24 hours patient is hyperventilating for a longer period of time then the bicarb will change up to maximum 5 per 10 change in the pco2 so if the pco2 drops from 40 to 30 your bicarb will change from drop by 5 means from 24 to they can drop up to 19 now so what how much pco2 is changing here somewhere around uh, if we take is 26.7 so 13 from 40 which they say how much pco2 change how much pco2 change pco2 change it's 13 uh, sorry 13 from 40 they have dropped to 27 or 26.7 so 13 changes there roughly we can roughly for calculation we can take is take that at 15 so for calculating mechanism uh, 15 now if it is an acute event the bicarb should drop by 2 to compensate for pco2 so if it is an acute one for 15 means uh, 1.5 2 drop and 1 drop for the remaining 5 so bicarb can drop for acute event 3 in that case the bicarb should be 21 24 minus 3 if it is a chronic one then for every 10 change there is a change of 10 yes, there is a change of 5 so for 15 uh, it will change 7.5 so chronic respiratory alkalosis the bicarb will change 7.5 so in our case how much they will drop from 24 to minus 7.5 it will come uh, somewhere around uh, 16.5 up to 16.5 they can drop so let's see what are the bicarb here 17 so if it is a chronic disorder means this patient is hyperventilating for more than 24 hours whatever the cause then th in the bicarbs uh, are somewhere around 16.5 up to 16.5 so it is a chronic respiratory alkalosis so either this is chronic re respiratory alkalosis now if we think that this is an acute event so how much bicarb will change 3 2 for 10 and 1 for remaining 5 so bicarb will change from 24 to 21 so for acute event this bicarb has dropped more than uh, 21 so if it is an acute respiratory alkalosis we have add on metabolic acidosis also there so if it is acute respiratory respiratory alkalosis then you have metabolic acidosis also present. metabolic acid dosis also present now which type of metabolic acidosis is there now you need to find out you look with for the anion gap so anion gap is sodium is here 130 and you uh, chloride is 104 and bicarb are 17 so how much will be the um, sorry so 104 plus 17 okay so 121 minus from 130 so um, anion gap is anion gap equal to 9 so it is normal anion gap nagma so now you need to find out what are the cause of nagma in this patient whether the there is gi loss or renal loss that's the case but what i want to tell you uh, that whenever you find a ph somewhere between normal range but you don't have the bicarb and pco2 in the normal range always try to find out what is the primary disorder in this case the primary disorder is respiratory alkalosis patient is hyperventilating your ph is slightly on the alkalotic side now based on history you will find out whether it is an acute event or it is a chronic event we don't have history here so that's why we have solved in both for acute and chronic so if it is a chronic one the pco2 change is somewhere around 15 so bicarb will change somewhere around 7.5 24 to 7 uh, minus 7.5 up to 16.5 here the bicarb are 17 so it's fine it's chronic respiratory alkalosis that's it you need not to mention the compensatory mechanism 
if it is an acute respiratory alkalosis means the event is within 24 hours or the patient is hyperventilating for uh, 12 to 24 hours means an acute event, a recent event. Then the patient has add on metabolic acidosis also because the metabolic component will not adjust so quickly in that scenario. Now, if it is a metabolic acidosis, you need to see Nagma. You can listen to the lecture on how to solve AVG, which is there in the our AVG playlist. So, Abhinav, I think my point is clear to you and to all that whenever you find a pH which looks like normal always try to find out the primary disorder and then solve according to that. So take off home message is compensation never overshoots the primary disorder. So try solving other images listen to the lecture which is present on the playlist that's all for today thank you.